This video is a presentation of Dragonfly's deep learning tool and a workflow to use it for segmentation. We will be using a scan of a KitKat chocolate bar that we wish to segment. There are four different phases to identify. The air bubbles, the waffle, the chocolate chips, and the melted chocolate. Depending on the complexity of the data set to segment, the neural network might need a lot of training data. For the segmentation, we will use 13 properly segmented slices, consisting of 11 consecutive ones, and two other slices which presented different features, taken at each extremity of the dataset. A first rough segmentation was made using the segmentation trainer, and some corrections were done to ensure that segmentation was as good as possible. We use a variation on the unit model implemented in Python with Keras. Unit's architecture consists of four down and four up sampling blocks with long skip connections concatenating feature maps from the sam down sampling path to the up sampling path. The first convolutional layer has 64 filters. The number of filters doubles each time the feature maps are down sampled. Each block contains two convolutional layers with ReLU activation followed by a max pooling or up sampling layer. We have to change the number of filters of the last layer to make sure that it is coherent with the number of classes we want. Since we want to segment four classes, we then need to have a last convolutional layer of four one by one filters to map each pixel's 64 element vector to prediction. We use a softmax activation so that a class probability distribution is associated to each pixel. Once the model object is created, we can print a summary of the neural network. To be able to easily use a model in Dragonfly, we use a deep model and deep model managers classes to save the neural network. The object will be saved in Dragonfly's program data directory. To open the deep learning tool, we first go to the tools menu and then select the deep learning tool. This might take a few seconds while it loads. We then choose a the model we want to train. We can see the neural network's architecture and its informations. Since we created our model with a script using Dragonfly's Deep Models Manager, it's already in the list of available models. We can then load a model with the Deep Learning Model too. We can also load a model using the Deep Learning tool by clicking on Import from Keras. We can then choose a .h5 file created with Keras. We can also build a model from scratch using the editing tool and to add all of the desired layers. Once we selected the model, we go to training. We must select our input channel and our output. If we use multiple ROIs as a ground truth segmentation, we will need to put all of the ROIs inside a multi-ROI. It's important to note that the neural network must always have one more class than the number of labels in the multi-ROI, as the background is considered as the last class. For example, if we have three phases we want to segment, and the network should have four classes. Depending on the type of task we are doing, we have to be careful about the target type we use. If we are going for a continuous output, for example with an autoencoder, we have to use a channel. If we are going for a binary classification, we have to use a ROI or a channel with two values. For a multi-class segmentation, we need a multi-ROI or again a channel with the same number of values as a number of classes we want. A common way to compensate a small data set is to use data augmentation. Different transformations are applied to the available data set to simulate having more data than we actually have. The images may be flipped vertically or horizontally, rotated, sheared, or zoomed in and out. The transformed images are then added to the training set. The ground truth data is typically split in three, training, validation, and test data. The training set is used to learn the model parameters. The validation set is not directly used to train the neural network, but is run through the network at the end of each epoch to make sure the training is going on properly. It allows to evaluate the performance of the network on different data from the training set. For example, to make sure the model is not overfitting. Having a validation set allows to change hyperparameters between runs to evaluate the performance when choosing which model to use. The test set is never used during the development phase because it's used at the end of development to assess the performance of the neural network on totally unseen data. If there is no test set put aside, we run the risk of overfitting to the validation set when trying a different model architectures. A typical split is 60 to 80 percent for training, 10 to 20 percent for validation, and 10 to 20 percent for the test sets. However, 
This is a rule of thumb and should not be seen as a strict rule to follow. If a large data set is used, the proportion of validation and test sets may be reduced to have more examples during training. We can select a validation set if we have one, or select the option to automatically split the data set into the training and validation sets. Now we go to the train parameters. The loss function measures the error between the neural network's prediction and the reality. The error is then used to update the model parameters. When working with a multi-class segmentation, categorical cross-entropy is generally a better choice since we are making a classification for each pixel. For a continuous output problem, other losses might be more appropriate, for example, mean squared error. The optimization algorithm is used to update the parameters of the model, such as the minimize a prediction error. The optimization algorithm is a procedure which computes the gradient or the partial derivative of the loss function with respect to the network parameters. The weights are then modified in the opposite direction of the gradient until achieving a local minimum. There are several optimization algorithms available, which work well on different kinds of problems. Atom usually works well and is generally a good, uh, a good starting point. We will use it here with the default parameters. One epoch consists of one forward pass and one backward pass through the whole training set. The forward pass is a computation of the prediction of each pixel, given by the current parameters. The backward pass, or backpropagation, is computation of the gradient depending on the error and the update of the parameters. We use 30 epochs in this example. The input patch size is the size of the image's subsections used in training. If, if choosing an input patch of 64, Dragonfly will cut the dataset in subsections of 64 by 64 pixels. These subsections will then be used as a training dataset. By cropping the images, each pass is faster and uses less memory. The patch size has to be big enough so that after uh, each downsampling layer, the data has not been excessively compressed. The batch size is number of examples used for training before updating the network parameters. When using a small batch size, the training process will use less memory but will offer a less stable optimization process, since there is a larger uncertainty over the gradient. We use a batch size of 32. The stride to input ratio is used to specify the overlap between the adjacent patches. If we see the input patch as a moving window, the ratio indicates that the proportion of pixels reused when we shift the window to select the next patch. Here we use a 0.5 ratio, meaning half of the patch used in one iteration is used in the next one. Keras has several callback functions it offers to help the training process. The early stopping callback monitors a given quantity during the training and stops it once it stops improving. This can be especially useful when uh, to prevent overfitting, but sometimes while training, we might get momentarily stuck in a local minimum and eventually get out of it to obtain a better score. A good idea is when using the early stopping is to choose a patient's level coherent with the number of, ep of epochs. The model checkpoint callback periodically saves the parameters of the neural network. The callback can be configured to monitor a certain quantity during the training process and save only the best model. Since the deep learning tool uses Keras with the TensorFlow backend, we can use the visualization tools such as TensorBoard. We will not be using it in this video. Terminate on NAN callback stops the training process when a NAN, or short for not number, loss is hit. It's always useful to select it in order, in order to stop when a problem is encountered. Keras also has a callback to reduce the learning rate of the optimizer. It keeps track of a, of a given metric, and once it stops improving, the learning rate is reduced by a specified factor. This can be especially useful when using an optimizer which does not automatically adapt to the learning rate. For example, stochastic gradient descent does not, but Adam does. A higher learning rate at the beginning of the of training can lead to fast, uh, faster early improvements, but eventually we might stagnate around a local minimum. A smaller step size will allow us to more gradually converge towards the optimum. Once all the options are selected, we click on the train button and start the process. This might take only a few seconds which if we choose a small network with few epochs and a small data set, but can take days with a deeper network, many epochs, and a large data set. Using a GPU will significantly speed up the process. Once the training is over, we can preview the results directly from the deep learning tool. We select the channel that we want to process with the neural network to enable the preview. The section of the channel that is currently in view will be segmented. 
We can then go back to the options and try again with new training parameters. Once we are satisfied with the results, we can save the network and close the deep learning tool. Once we have a trained ne neural network, we can go to the segment panel and go all the way down to segment with classifier. We can then select the channel to be segmented and the desired segmentation model if we have more than one. Then again, we can either compute a preview of the segmentation or segment the whole data set. Segmentation with the neural network is also available in the image processing toolbox. One way to use a deep learning tool to segment fairly large data sets is to segment a few slices either by hand or with another of Dragonfly's tools, such as a segmentation trainer. The segmentation obtained with a segmentation trainer might not be perfect and will probably need some slight corrections. Once we have a certain number of properly segmented slices, we can then train the model on the segmentation. Even though the results might not be great at first, we can make some corrections and then train the network again with more data. The results should be better. We can then start over with this procedure until we have enough properly segmented data to have the best results possible. This works well with a fairly shallow and quick to learn network such as UNET, and also with fairly self-similar data since overfitting is less of an issue. This was a, pr a quick presentation of Dragonfly's deep learning tool used for segmentation. We created a model using Keras and Dragonfly's deep model class. We then saw how to use the tool and went through the, an overview of the different options, validation splitting, data augmentation, training parameters, and callbacks. Now that the model was trained, we used it to segment the whole data set we were interested in. We finally discussed an iterative segmentation process to gradually create more data